Next Goal Wins, a movie about the national team from American Samoa, is in theaters starting Friday, tomorrow. And joining us now on Football America is one of the many inspirations behind the film. And a man who actually inspired me, Herc, back in the late 90s when he took my beloved DC United to the 1999 MLS Cup. Thomas Rong, and there he is. TR, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. All right, so I'm, I'm reading the description of the film here, Thomas, and it describes yeah. you as a, quote, down-on-his-luck coach, Thomas <laughs> Wrong. And so give us kind of the story here. How do you get from Chief Scout, U.S. Soccer, to the manager job at American Samoa? Very simple. Uh, Sunil Galati called me late in 2010. When, by the way, I was still employed by U.S. Soccer. Um and asked me if I could help a territory of the United States called American Samoa. Um, I looked at my wife and went, where's American Samoa? And she went, Fiji. I go, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Not knowing the backstory that they were last in FIFA in the rankings, had not won in 20 years, had not scored a goal in 20 years, uh, had lost 31 to nothing against Australia, the worst ever uh, World Cup qualifying defeat. Um, so here we go to Polynesia, and, and what a trip it was, by the way. Incredible journey, uh, obviously. As most of you know, we eventually win 2-1, which was historic, became a documentary that now the great Taika Waititi has turned into a movie. And how's your day going? Because Michael Fassbender, Magneto, is playing me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got us beat there, Thomas. Hey, let me ask you a question. You mentioned that 31-0 scoreline. I believe that was back in 2001. So when Correct. you get there, what's the level like? Like, wh what are you experiencing with these players? <laughs> what do you think the worst team <laughs> in the world is like what it's like? It, it, it... Listen, Herc, when the NESL folded, most international players, which is mid-'80s when I, when I played here with – the great icons from Cruyff to Best to Pele, Beckenbauer, you name it. I stayed. I, I coached eight-year-old girls and boys. I became a high school coach. I became eventually a college coach, and then I moved myself in that first year into MLS in 1996, where Farouk Qureshi took a great risk on me, uh, not having any professional coaching experience. So I, I've been there and done that in terms of poor levels. Um, so... It was really a challenge, an opportunity. And, and the more I looked at their games, the more I looked at their opponents, I knew this team was better than 31 nothing, or 28 nothing, or 18 nothing, or 11 nothing. You know, there's a, there's a great line actually early in the movie where the assistant coach says at the Pacific Games, I wasn't there yet, this is progress. We only lost 14. We lost 18 against them the last time. So I, I was absolutely prepared to take on probably the biggest challenge of my life, which from downtown Amsterdam, we love challenges. We, we live below sea level, guys. So we, <laughs> we, we, we need to be innovative and we need to think outside of the box as a small country and, and embrace whatever we see, which the, the Dutch do normally. And I did as well. And, you know, yeah, there were challenges, but great rights, great, great journey for me personally and, and professionally. And if somebody asked me, what was your greatest success? It wasn't winning the title, Seba, with, with DC United, which was wonderful. Don't get me wrong. It was not beating Uruguay with Cavani and Suarez in the 207 under 20 World Cup. Uh, it, it was this journey here with this these beautiful people on this great island that tried to make their country proud uh, by going out each and every day as amateurs, by the way, guys. Uh, and, and I'm so glad I was just able to help them along a little bit. And at the end of the day, more young kids are playing on the island. It's a rugby island, an American football island. So brilliant. A uh, lot of love for that, uh, that tiny island in, in the beautiful, you know, South Pacific. Thomas, you took charge of the team for World Cup qualifying. Obviously, American Samoa did not qualify for the World Cup. So what kind of was the highlight moment for you, the moment where you thought, boy, this is worth it. We really have made progress. What was that 2-1 that victory you were talking about, without giving away too much of the movie? No, no, no. It, 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 there were three moments to me. One, I, I convinced the goalkeeper that gave up 31 goals against Australia to come back out of retirement. And it took me three weeks to do it. So I had a 
a Rudy kind of thing. Let's do it for Nikki Salupa. That's that was his name. And and what resonated with me is the first time I spoke to him, he said, when I walk the streets, people recognize me and go, Oh, you gave up 31 goals. So my son thinks I'm a loser. And I just said, we're going to win, Nikki. We're going to win. We're going to win. And 10 minutes after the game, he comes up to me, cries, and he said, I just spoke to my son. He thinks he's a, he's a hero. Jaya, the first transgender to ever play in a men's World Cup qualifying game, it is a brilliant story. Part of the, the beautiful Fafa Fina, third gender, transgender community uh, in Polynesia, where it's totally accepted. Uh, that includes, by the way, the Dutchies. You know, we're, we're, we're pretty liberal. Uh, so that was a great moment when I connected with her early on. And then an unforgotten story is I go to a high school game on my day off, probably a weekend, and there's this incredible running back. So it's a high school football final. And I go, I want the guy to come to practice. The president goes, he's never played soccer. I go, I don't care. I, I just need him. I have one guy in midfield who can play a through ball. I've looked at all these teams who are playing. It's a passive high line, and he's going to get breakaways. And he scores the winner at 17, calls me 10 years later and goes, Coach, I'm in Miami. I'm the starting safety for the Oakland Raiders. I got two tickets for you against the Dolphins. I mean, <laughs> you can't make up this stuff. Wow. Incredible. Hey, 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 Thomas, talk about how the movie actually came about. I mean, how does one get approached for this to become a movie? How does this start? It started with a call from, from Taika Waititi uh, just after he had won an Oscar for, for Jojo Rabbit. And I didn't know much about him. Um, introduced himself, pretty much told me a little bit of his history. Uh, he, he's a funnier Tarantino. He plays in most of his movies brilliantly, as he did at, at Jojo Rabbit, obviously, where he plays a young Hitler. Um, and he said, you know what? One, I want to make my Polynesian proud. He's from New Zealand but from an indigenous tribe, the, the Maori tribe. And he goes, I want to I wanna make sure that the people that live on the margins in these beautiful islands, because there's a lot of sadness there, guys, high unemployment rate, uh, rate uh, high alcohol and, and drug abuse, obesity as well. Uh, there's one tuna plan pretty much where everybody tries to work. And the only way to get off the rock, they call that, a beautiful rock, by the way, is to enlist in the army or get a scholarship, uh, for instance. And, and and he just said, and I love that, there's more than 50% of the cast is from um, Samoan ancestry. Uh, Kamara, who's the transgender actress that plays uh, Jaya, for instance, is a great example. So when he told me all of that, and he said, Michael Fassbender is playing you, I go, okay, I mean, that's <laughs> Magneto, isn't it? Uh, uh, Inglorious Bastards, uh, by the way. Uh, Stephen Jobs, uh, by the way. Uh, yeah, I, I can do that. 20 years younger than me. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so tell us about working with Michael Fassbender. Like, does he does he know his stuff as a coach? Because one thing that always kills me in soccer movies is when you see their players or, coaching, or coaches who clearly don't know how to coach or play soccer doing it on the big screen. Does he at least know what he's doing? <sighs> no. And, and, and you guys showed... <laughs> No, and you guys showed the end, and he's the first one to say that. I'm a rugby guy. I don't know anything about soccer. And, 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 and yes, it's the biggest game. And, and yes, uh, it, 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 it's, you know, it, it's an interesting, it's a comedy drama, guys. Uh, and with a lot of things changed from the original documentary. It's like, you know, Ted Lasso meets Cool Runnings by the way of the Mighty Ducks with, with Taika's great uh, humor, obviously. Um, you know, it's about, for him, it was more about using football, the biggest game in the world, to build spiritual bridges across the Pacific more than anything else, you know, and, and, and I was drawn to that. I had not a lot of influence on anything, the script. I've never met Michael Fassbender up till this day, by the way. So that tells you a little bit that he went with it, ran with it, and it's just an uplifting underdog story. I think that's much needed in the world right now, and and it's the biggest game as well. So let's let's see where this thing is heading. All right, there we have it. Next goal wins in theaters starting tomorrow. Thomas Rang, and thanks so much for the time, man. Great to have you with us here on Football Americas. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Seba. Thanks, Eric. You guys do great jobs. Well done. <laughs>